Okay, we're back, and we're going to do um, a couple little demonstrations here of finding capacitance for spherical and cylindrical capacitors. Uh, this is a process where uh, Gauss's law comes back to haunt us a little bit. We're going to have to use it to find electric fields, because uh, if we think about this, we know how to find and define uh, capacitance. That's the, the charge being held divided by the voltage. Now the voltage is actually, the V represents the voltage difference across the capacitor. So it's probably more accurate to say capacitance is Q over delta V. That's what we're really talking about. Uh, charge is usually just a number. Um, if, we really, if, if we're able to find out what the voltage difference is, we should be able to define our capacitance for a given shaped capacitor. Uh, we know voltage difference is determined by what the electric field is in that gap, you know, between the two spheres, between the two cylinders, or between the two plates. And so um, the, the process we're going to use is Gauss's law, define electric fields, integrate those electric fields between the, the gap in order to find the voltage difference, and then simply plug it in to our, our definition, Q divided by delta V. Okay, so we'll do these side by side so you can kind of see it's the same process for each. And we're, we're looking at these capacitors, uh, two different radii, two different surfaces, equal and opposite charges. So for a sphere, the electric field between the two shells is simply, looks like a point charge, that, that inner ball over 4 pi epsilon r squared. And for cylinders, uh, the only thing that changes is the surface area, but the same idea. Electric field of the gap is going to be whatever the charge the, on the inner cylinder is, divided by uh, 2 pi epsilon uh, the length and little r. Okay. So we now have this connection between electric fields and voltage difference. We're probably more used to seeing it written as the gradient. Okay, the electric field depends on having a voltage difference between two points, and then we have this, this negative derivative idea. And so uh, here's a case where we know the field, we're trying to solve for the voltage difference, so we have to integrate. So for the spheres, the voltage difference between the two shells is the negative integral of our electric field, which we now know. And we're, um, we're doing voltages. We're basically we're from the outside inward. So from B to A are, are the bounds on that. On the cylindrical side, exactly the same kind of idea, only we have a different electric field. We have to plug in the Q over some constants, length and R, dr. And so we can do these pretty quickly. Um, over on the left hand side for spheres, we have this minus sign, we've got our constants. And our antiderivative basically is, is 1 over r squared, which turns out to be negative 1 over r. And the minus signs go away. And if we evaluate this thing, we're going to have 1 over a minus 1 over b. On the right, for cylinders, we're going to end up with uh, our constants that get pulled out of the integral. We have um, 1 over r is, is, in, is left within the integral. So that's going to be a natural log of r, which we have to evaluate between, oops, between uh, b and a. So that's going to be this whole mess. 
times the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Let's write that as the natural log of a over b. With that minus sign, that's going to flip that over. To become the natural log of b over a. Which will be a, some nice positive number. Okay, so those are the voltage differences. And then, um, last but not least, we can go ahead and write down what our capacitance is for each shape. So we can go ahead, we can plug in um, the delta Vs that we just found. And so for spheres, we have all of our constants. Uh, let's see, we, we can simplify this a little bit. Um, in parentheses, that would be the same as b minus a all over a times b. Notice how the, the q drops out. Since our capacitance, our final expression, is a lot of stuff flips up on top. And then we have b minus a in our denominator. So, it's basically depending, we have units of area on top, A times B. Those are meters times meters. Uh, so the, the size of the shells matters. The, the bigger the shells, the more charge you, you have, um, the possibility of storing. The denominator, B minus A, that's the gap. That's the size of the gap between the two spheres. So uh, if you make the gap smaller, you can actually increase the capacitance. Okay, so we have control over that. We can, we can make capacitors to be whatever value we need just by playing with that, just the size uh, of, of your capacitor. Uh, for cylinders, we, we have Q divided by our voltage difference. Q over all these constants. And then our natural log. Again, the Q's drop out, and our final expression is we have uh, our constants flip up into our numerator. Okay, so it depends on how long. Okay, again, the physical size of, of your capacitor, the bigger it is, the more capacity you have to store charge. And it's divided by this natural law with the ratio of the two radii. Okay. So that's just a nice example, a nice application of Gauss's law for real life, uh, where you can custom build your capacitors to be whatever number of farads you need them to be. Um, and it's just this process of finding the, the fields with Gauss's law, integrate to find the voltage differences, and then use our definition for capacitance. Um, hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.